Praise the Lord, yes, saints. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Feels good to be back in the building. Good morning, <laughs> good morning. Hallelujah. Like trip yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. So I'm going to open up with a little prayer this morning. Right. Praise the Lord. Father God, we come to you, Jesus. We come to you humble, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, Father, that you be in the mix, Lord Jesus, of every person that come forth, every minister, every teacher, musician, whatever it is, Lord Jesus, I'm asking that you be present, Lord Jesus, as we diminish, Lord Jesus, we're asking it for increase of you, Father, and I just want to thank you, Jesus, for God and me, I have nothing to say, but you have everything to say, Father, to your people, in your name's sakes, in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 So God. praise the Lord, saints. The Lord. Um, so um, this is my first time teaching Sunday school in right. this year. Amen. Praise the Lord, which God is good. Amen. And uh, this is uh, also a new book for me this year, right. the book of Jeremiah. And uh, so I'll give you a little history behind uh, my book, right. um, uh, Jeremiah. And I, I don't know, I, what, what I would call the, this lesson is um, possibly um, ordained calling, your ordained calling maybe. So um, in the book of Jeremiah, uh, the book was written uh, Jeremiah wrote the book as an autobiography. It was like he was telling the story to someone and they was writing it for him. So, and it was about his um, life and his ministry. And um, I don't know how many of you read the book of Jeremiah. So I'm just trying to give you a little bit of uh, history behind it first. Um, and this, this um, was during the ministry of his reigns. This was just, he was the... Uh, it, the last five kings of uh, Judah, and 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 after that, that was dated between six twenty seven and five eighty six BC, yes. and and it was uh, the setting was in Jeru Jerusalem, and so Jeremiah is a prophet, and he was the last prophet before the fall of Jerusalem, and. His his mission was when God came to him. He his mission was to talk to the people. Praise the Lord. So as a prophet, he was just he was a prophetic because God was speaking through him and telling him what to do and what to say. Um, and a lot of people call Jeremiah the weeping prophet because there's 52 chapters in this book, and he was basically crying through the, uh, most of it, you know, they call him the weeping prophet because he was always trying to um, encourage the people. And it was like just a song to him to let them know, we, I, God need for you to change and to give up your ways and stuff. So that's why they call him the weeping prophet because he had so much deep sorrow for the people and for what was going on. And in the in the unrepentant people and, and the people that didn't repent and all this stuff he had he he just wanted them to um he just wanted them to um to repent and turn their ways back to god and that was his first purpose and then his um second purpose was um uh to uh encourage the people to worship God, to encourage the people to go back to God. So he had two assignments to try to change their mind and to encourage them. So um, if you think about Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah was like the uh, picture perfect of faithfulness to God. You know, he did God's word. He, he wanted to do the work of God. So he gave up so many uh, personal sacrifices you know there was so much um, that he, he went through 
um, unimaginable stuff that he went through and, and oppositions that he had to stand against. He had to stand against, um, um, say for instance, if there was, um, you're the only one, well, everybody knows the Super Bowl today, so you're the only one on the team that's out there and you up against the whole, you paying offense by yourself. <laughs> So that's the way it was from him. He was up against groups of people, tons of people didn't believe him, didn't, didn't want to listen to what he had to say. So he was he was up against so many groups and so many people. And it was just like, he was just like a single little player there trying to defend the whole area, the whole kingdom, the whole group of people and stuff. So um, Jeremiah, he he had to, he was just like warning the people and and trying to let them know what God had said and and he had encouragement to the people if they turn their wicked ways and their promises that they'll be renewed, they they could be renewed in their hearts and stuff. But obviously they didn't listen. So a lot of that is on in the book, that's just kind of an overview of like what Jeremiah, um, the book of Jeremiah is all about. And it's a lot in there, <laughs> praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> so today I'm just gonna um, read um, in chapter one and I'm gonna start with verse four and I'm gonna go uh, four through 19. Okay, and this is, uh, well, yeah, I'll just start at um, verse 4, Jeremiah 1 and 4 through 19. So it said, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, this is Jeremiah, he said, the word come unto him, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, I am child, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put, put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Thank you, Lord. I received that. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and throw down to build and to plant. Moreover, moreover <clears throat> the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Uh -huh. And then said the Lord unto me, thou has well seen, for I, has, for I hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time saying, what seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north, an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set everyone his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls thereof round about and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness with who has forsaken me and who has burned incense unto other gods and worshiped the words of their own hands. Thou therefore gird up the lions and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, least I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city 
and an iron pillar and bracing walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princesses thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land, and they shall fight against thee. But they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. So, praise the Lord. That's a lot. <laughs> There's, uh, I don't know how many different lessons in that, but I'm just going to focus on um, uh, a couple of things. So, um, God called Jeremiah, and Jeremiah did he, you know, Jeremiah tried to come against it in a way, like we all do. We, you know, God ordained us and he tells us, he told him right here, you were a dean before you even, or, you know, before you was even in your mother's <clears throat> womb. Yeah. And that's what us too, praise the Lord, you know, we are ordained to do something for God, but we uh, sit on the back burner and, and don't do it. And so that's what Jeremiah was trying to do. <laughs> but um, God kept encouraging him and um, using him. It didn't matter like what the way he was thinking. He tried to get out of it more than one time because, and, and we do the same thing, praise the Lord. You know, if something comes before us, so I can't do that because um, uh, I'm not supposed to be doing that. I, that's just not me. But God, when God is there and like he touched Jeremiah's lips, like I said, I received that. I need for God to touch my lips. I need for him to touch my mind, my body, my soul. When I'm doing stuff for him, I need for him to be with me yeah. because I don't want it to be me. Right. Amen. And um, Jeremiah had that. And God even, even told him, he, God knew us before we were even assigned to our parents to come here. And that has always been one mystery thing for me. And I'm saying, well, God knew me before I was even put into the womb. So he knows me, everything. I can, we can't even, our minds can't go to what God already know about us here. We can't, we can't predict five years from now what's going to happen to us, but God already know. He know where he's going to lead us. He gave us an opportunity to have a choice to follow him. So, um, and Jeremiah, he chose to follow God. He believed him. He was faithful and he chose to follow no matter all the obstacles, everything he went through, he still stayed faithful as a prophet for God. Amen. So, um, and, um, and like I said, I was reading that before the parents even think about we're planned or not, God knows us. You know, the parents don't even, when they plan and they love baby, we plan and well, we're going to start a family. God already know what he going, what's going to happen. Okay. He know the anointing that, or the, the seed that he's going to plant in each person. And each of us have, we all have something ordained in us. We, um, and sometimes it takes a little bit of, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know how you would say it. It takes something to bring it out of us. If it's in us, it takes more study, more work, and someone to plant the seed to say, you know, you can do this and you can do it. And when you're leaning on God, okay? Because for a thousand and, and 10,000 years, I never thought I'll be standing here, but with God, you know, God already knew that one of these days this would come to pass, but I had no idea. I never thought in my whole life and that I would be standing right here, just behind this podium, <laughs> praise the Lord. And and God give us all something. And I'm not saying, I'm not, don't even, when it comes to teaching, um, I don't know if I've been ordained to do that, praise the Lord. But um, there are other things that God have ordained me in that I know for sure, because he spoke to me and I know he speak to you, just like he spoke to Jeremiah and told him, 
you know, that he was with him and he had touched him. And when I can remember back um, years ago, this is just my incident, you know, when God um, spoke to me about um, spiritual healing and I'm thinking, well, that, you know, is that me? But the thing is, he said it. God said it. So all I need to do is continue to practice it, to pray, to fast, and ask God to show me my next step, what I need to do. We all got something. There's great administrative people. There's people that can sing great, you know? Ooh, some of them people that sing those songs, you know, those uh, gospel songs, and they can just take you there because the holiness uh, is there. Amen? So Jeremiah, uh, uh, he uh, fulfilled his prophecy by going out um, over the, to the people and he was telling them that, uh, um, you know, to change their wicked ways because they were worshiping gods that was not God. They were worshiping idols and, and um, they were they were even so bad, that's a little bit farther in my book, that they were sacrificing their own kids. You know, they, they were killing their children for their gods. And that wasn't something that God had asked them to do, not the true living God. So, um, and this is why Jeremiah, he was so set on trying to help them before it failed. And by the time we get to the end, you'll know that, you know, it did fail. But we there's a lot of go on between here and there. So, um, and Jeremiah was, a, he was a true prophet. And I think about um, prophets and true prophets, because he was telling them what God had told him what was going to happen, and they didn't believe him. They, he even ended up being in prison and beaten and all kinds of stuff because they didn't believe him. He went through lots of stuff, which we'll get to that on in my book. But um, right now I'm just talking about how he was, uh, he, he was called, he was ordained by God. God told him, he told him, he said, I'm just a child. But he actually started to, um, um, the words are just coming out of his mouth. <laughs> He just started to talk and, and he didn't have, he tried to fight it. He said he, even in, I think it was um, chapter 20, I think it was that I read, where he talked about, um, he was trying not to, he didn't want to, but he go like, it's a burning in my heart. He said, it burns in my heart that I have to continue doing this and I have tried to suppress it, but you know, it's just a burning. So when God give you that burning desire, you just can't walk away from it. You know, that's just like, um, um, I don't know, I guess our preachers, when they got a word and God is just working with them and is, you go like, I oh, know I ain't gonna go there, Lord, cause it's gonna hurt somebody's feeling, but God just gonna like, yeah. And then they have to go there eventually because they're not being obedient if they don't. And God has ordained them to do that. He wants them to bring that message or whatever it is. And I know people, I, not only people, myself, God tell me something to tell. And I'm going to that ain't my business, Lord. But actually it is. It's all of our business. Amen. If we're going to do the work of the Lord. So that's that's what um, Jeremiah, he, he was a true prophet. And he, and I think about prophets, some of the prophets in the past, the prophetic word that, and that comes to pass. And that's how you know when they're true prophet, because their words come to pass. Amen. We are, our bishop was, oh my gosh, he was a true prophet, true man of God, because so many of his words and, and the things that he said, it came to pass. He just knew, you know, he just, um, just he knew me, called me out on all kinds of stuff. And I promise you, I never had to sit down and had a conversation with him. This is right after I first met him. So a true prophet is in is connected to God. 
So they're listening to what God said. So, and there's uh, false prophets out there too. You have to be careful about which one <laughs> you listen to. Amen. Um, uh, but a true prophet, yeah, his words are come to pass or that whenever they talk to you and tell you things that hit you so hard, be like, how do you know this? You know, so, um, and I think about uh, Martin Luther King, he was a true prophet. Because he, uh, if you think back before his assassination, he had said, he said, when one of his speeches, I, of course, I don't know the speech, the, exactly the way he said it, but he talked about, he said he would like how he wouldn't be surprised in 40 years that we would have a black president of the United States. And if exactly 40 years later, we had a black president of the United States. So I thought that was a prophetic thing that he put out there. And 40 years later, back then you couldn't see that in the sixties, trust me. And at the time that he was saying that there was no possible way, the way our country was at that time. And so he was a um, true prophet that was speaking prophetity. And that's what Jeremiah was doing with um, the people, you know, he was uh, trying to tell them about um, what God was saying and how he would turn things around. And they had an opportunity to, to repent and come back to him, but they didn't listen. They thought he was some sort of um, whatever that they thought, I don't know, um, but they didn't think he was a true prophet, you know, and who gave him the right to do that. They didn't think he was anything, but, he was a faithful man of God. Um, uh, so I don't know why I have this question written down here, but I don't want no answer, of course. <laughs> and I said, how many of us use our weaknesses to claim we can't do the Lord's work? So that is a, a big thing. There, There's a lot of us that use our weaknesses saying that we can't do the Lord's work um, when we actually can. Um, I, I can't go this place and do this because my foot hurt today. And it's, it's not that you can't, you can't do it. You're making a choice not to do the Lord's work. It's not anything. It, God gives us choices. So those are just choices. Praise the Lord. So, um, so when we're called, when we're called upon, upon when God ordained us, and when we're called upon, you know, we can't run, we can't hide. We, you just have to, eventually, you know, just do the means of God. Just do the means of what you need to do. You know, you can't, you can't run, you can't hide. Um, for Jeremiah, he tried to, he tried to get out of it. I'm just a child. And he tried to um, just suppress it and where he wouldn't even think about it, but it was burning in his heart so bad. So um, I, I'm talking about there, there are so many great spiritual gifts and people that we possess, you know, there's the songwriters, the people that sing, the administrative work, the healers, prayer warriors, you know, any great ministry leaders, um, for example, we got burning desire here at Right in Greater Light. I, I think about um, the homeless ministry. I'm just going to use them for an example. Even during this whole COVID time, praise the Lord, the, our homeless ministry has still been up and running. So that's when you're faithful and you got that burning desire to do what God wants you to do. And that's what Jeremiah was. He he just had to do it, even though he tried not to, but he had to because he said it was burning so bad in his heart. Even when he tried to put it out, his mind, his heart was like, it's the heart work. Amen. It's a heart work. So like I said, our, our uh, leaders have been, they, it's their heart work is where their heart is at. They really want to make sure that they do that ministry. It has nothing to do with the rest of us sit back and like, 
oh, is that still going on? Because it's not our hard work. Amen. We'll help out. We'll do stuff, but it, it, it's just not like a burning desire. Praise the Lord. So um, Jeremiah, he went on to talking to the Lord um, in this first chapter about how, uh, you know, he was talking about how uh, uh, he was afraid of their faces and and he was just afraid to go forth because he thought that he wasn't the one to be doing that. But God let him know, you know, behold, um, he said, I have put my words in your mouth, not your own words. God said, I put my words in your mouth. So, and then after that, you know, God gave him a little example. And this is Jeremiah Terrell in his own autobiography and someone else was writing it for him. God, um, he said that God um, asked him, what did he see? And showed him examples of stuff and he repeated it back. So God know that he can see and he know, you know, we, we can, we, he saw what the people was doing and God wanted him to see what can, you know, they didn't turn around, but he still wanted him to go forth and be the messenger to let them to know that they could be saved that, uh, you know, that destruction was coming from the North, that it would be taken over if you didn't stop your wicked ways. And that's true with us now these days, you know, just look at all the weakness in this country. <laughs> God, it, he has messengers out there. He have us, he have the saints. We're his messenger right now to let the world know because the world is going crazy with simple stuff. And it basically boils down to um, the internet in it in in the the, the 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 Facebook, the internet, the Twitter, all of those things is causing the world to be in an uproar because it depends on where you are and what information they want to feed you. That's what they they send you all negative stuff. There's nothing positive coming in. It's all negative news feeds and people get an uproar from that and then they uproar into each other and nations and people and this happened and that happened and so as a messenger from god we need to spread the word of god we need to blow up those things with god and about god and how you can be saved and where we need to be we're god's messenger we need to use not only, but now, uh, Jeremiah back then, he didn't have the technology that we have now these days. So he, he was just him in his mouth and what he had to say. And, and I don't think God gave him, I will have to read again. I don't think God gave him any special abilities. You know, like Moses had the, the snake, that the rod that turned into a snake. Jeremiah didn't have any of those things to, you know, it, it was his mouth. That's all God anointed, all God ordained on him. He said, I will touch your mouth and fill you with the word. So, um, and, and I receive that now this day too. I believe God have to touch my mouth. He have to touch me in order for me to even, you know, because <laughs> like I said, God touches each and every one of them. It's just up to us how we want to, receive it, how faithful we want to be with what he's given us and what he's touched us with, how faithful we want to walk in those shoes. Praise the Lord. So Jesus, hallelujah. And he told him how the devastation would come uh, by the things that he saw and stuff. Um, and it talks down here about uh, uh, an iron pillar and later on in some of the other chapters where uh, Jeremiah was wearing, um, it wasn't an iron, it wasn't iron, but God, it was something he had to represent what he was saying with 
talking about the fall or whatever that what was going to happen and um he would he was wearing it around his neck but then the 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 people that were against him, I can't remember all the names. You know, I'm really bad with remembering nations' names and people's names and stuff like that. But you guys get where I'm coming from. They took it off of him and broke it. But then God said, and he said he there was be one made of of iron, of cast iron. Then they can't break it. <laughs> because they they were trying to break him down. They were trying to um keep him at bay to stop him from saying what he was saying there was a couple of believers but not really many especially the kings and the, and the ones that want to be worshiped that they thought that they were the ones that um and the worship their fake gods their man-made gods and all of this came about after way back when moses is is when actually this first started when they started they turned away from God and they started to make those um um what do you call them statues and different stuff like that so that's when um uh, it first started and God had brought them out of he had brought them out of um um he had brought them when they was um exile when they was in prison he had brought them through all of that brought them out of it and he had freedom but they and then they turned after all he had done for them he turned from them and started to worship um idols and so after that's when it really started and so jeremiah's some of the generations down where they're continuing to do this and they had got so bad that god said you know this has got to go um, or they will be destroyed. And eventually they were destroyed because they didn't turn back against their wicked ways. And um, God says, you know, that he's always with us. He's, he's with us no matter what. He's always with us. No matter what we go through, it's not going to be easy. Um, we're going to run into a whole bunch of turbulence trying to spread this word and, and to live this holy way and to live what God wants us to do and to speak what God wants us to say and to do what God wants us to do. Um, it's not going to be easy. We're going to all go through some rough times. And um, the same as Jeremiah, he went through so much. But then at the end, he was still, even he though he was exiled too, and the city did fall, but he was still preaching even after that in exile because he was still lifting up God. He didn't change his faithfulness. So no matter what we go through, no matter what type of turbulence, no matter what happened, we still have to keep our faithfulness to God. So that's what Jeremiah, he was all about that. He was staying faithful to his word. He was staying faithful to his work. He was staying faithful. He stayed faithful to what God wanted him to do. So that's what we have to do too as um, Christians. We have to remember to always be a Christian. Don't be a Christian today and something else tomorrow. Well, I don't want to just say Christian because that's, uh, shall I say, uh, spiritual, spiritually led that's what i basically like to say because i want to be led by the spirit and not by christianity or or as they say religion because that has nothing to do with being spirit led by god when god touches you it's like no other touch and when he talks to you it's like no other talk and when he's with you it's like no other um no no one can take the place of his presence with you amen Wow. Amen. Well, that's about all I have for today is that, you know, um, I guess I didn't study enough or I didn't have enough to bring forth. Um, praise the Lord. And I just say, you know, like, like I said, before we were even born in the belly, he knew us. God knows us. Amen. And, um, even before we was out of the womb, 
He sanctified us. He sanctified us to serve him. It doesn't matter who you are because of the covenant that Jesus left, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, God, everybody, it don't matter who you are, you, you're been sanctified to know God. That was a new um, covenant that came, came forth um, after the old covenant, after Jeremy, that's a new covenant that if you are to be born in this earth, you, you know, you could know that there is a God. And they say, well, what about the people that's in Africa and all this stuff that they never knew, that had never heard of Jesus? They still know him because it's, it, we, we've been sanctified to know God through the womb before we even come. We know, we, we know, somehow we know. It's unexplainable, but we do know. Amen. Um, okay, I, that's about it for me today. Praise the Lord. It was a short lesson for me. Yeah, I ended a little early. Praise the Lord, but that's all I have prepared for today. Amen.